Folks, what is your least favorite character archetype in fighting games? I saw this tweet on Twitter about the most hated and worst character archetypes throughout fighting games, and it really got me thinking, you know, what are the types of characters that we see time and time again that always end up being a huge mistake from a design perspective or from a balance perspective or just a fun to fight perspective. So today we're going to be going through some of people's responses to this question and I'll give you my thoughts and then I'll give you my own picks for what I think are the most painful types of characters to fight against in fighting games. But guys, before we get into it, I wanted to tell you that today's video is sponsored by me and my new merch shop, jmcroftsmerch.com. Go check it out. I've got some shirts with my logo and I've got the brand new, the first round is just data mug. So, you know, no matter how badly you lose the first round, whether it's a dramatic finish, a fatality, seven golden letters, whatever it is, just remember it's just data. You can still bring it back, guys. So yeah, I'd appreciate it if you checked it out, and we're only making a hundred of these mugs. Uh, once a hundred are sold, they're all gone, so if you're interested in one with this nice uh, nondescript fighting game logo design, uh, make sure you pick it up before they're all gone. But with that, let's start talking about some hated fighting game character archetypes. So first up from the original tweet here, I really resonated with this idea of a low health, high damage, every tool in the game type character. I feel like this is a mistake we see time and time again in all kinds of fighting games. The first character that comes to mind for me is obviously Akuma. This is basically Akuma's like whole design, like whatever the other Shoto characters want to do, Akuma is out here doing it better. He's got better combos, he's usually got better properties on his moves, he's got a dive kick and he's also got crazy mix-ups that the other Shotos don't have and of course he's got an air fireball which is always a super ridiculous tool in every game. So how do they balance out a character that has everything? Well, they give him low HP and low stun, and I guess that's enough, you know? In some games, it does work out, and he gets stunned really quickly by characters like Dudley and Ibuki and stuff. You know, it decently balances the character out. He's a very good character in Third Strike, but he's not top tier. But in other games, like Street Fighter 4, he's been really problematic at various times. In Street Fighter 5, he's been problematic. And obviously in uh, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, he is banned. So, uh, yeah, it's a very dangerous thing to do to make a character who has everything but HP. Another obvious example of this is Zero in Marvel vs. Capcom 3. He's got probably the best normals in the game, some of the best combos in the game. He can do 100% really easily. He's got Buster Shot, which is a really ridiculous move. He's got Lightning, which is really ridiculous for mix-ups. He's got Infinite. But guys, he has low HP, so it's fair, right? It's fair. He has really low HP, only, only 800k or something, so clearly he's balanced right? Balanced out by the HP? I don't know about that. But for me, the most egregious example, maybe of all time, of this was Vanilla Street Fighter 4 Seth. So this guy, he's got Dalsim normals, so he's a really amazing zoner, also with his fireball and his invincible uppercut, and he can hit confirm his uppercut on block for FADC, so you can make the uppercut safe on block. But then if they get hit by it, it's fine. You can just not spend the meter, so you don't really have to commit to FADC. He's got a 360 command throw as well, because clearly a character with amazing zoning and a dive kick and really busted combos as well is also going to need a 360 unteckable command grab. And then in Vanilla Street Fighter 4 especially, he had this really broken trap where he could just throw fireballs at full screen. And all you could really do was block or focus attack to absorb it, because if he throws this and you jump it, he can just ultra you and hit you out of the air and there's nothing you can do. It's essentially like an unavoidable ultra situation. It was so broken. They had to take this out in the future versions so that he can't ultra as long as there's a fireball on screen. But man, that was ridiculous as well. And just in general, yeah, I really do not like this archetype of like, let's just give him everything and they'll be balanced as long as they have low health because that almost never works out. But with that being said, Zangief can stun Seth in one hit, <laughs> so that's pretty funny, so at least he has that going for him, but uh, even with that, he is one of the most broken characters in the original version of Street Fighter 4, and I hope we never see that again. 
another one that was pointed out in this thread was zoning or keep away characters with the ability to rush down harder than dedicated rushdown characters. Yeah, this is another one that we've seen a few times in some different games. One that came to mind for me was Storm from Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Maybe Storm is the opposite. She's a rushdown character that can also play keep away, but she can definitely do both really well. So she's such a threat because you always have to worry about, you know, this fast try jump mix up tech that she has. But at the same time, she has so many tools for just avoiding the opponent, you know. Obviously, she's very famous for chilling at the top of the screen and going caw, 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 and just being where you can't hit her, building a ton of meter. She's got really amazing projectiles as well, and she can get really high up in the air and annoy you with typhoons and stuff, track you everywhere on screen. And of course, she can basically stop you from approaching at any time using Hailstorm. So yeah, another character with really just so much going for her and not having a defined weakness. I think that's in general something that is a pet peeve for me in fighting games is when characters don't really have any weakness and they just do everything well. Sentinel is probably another example, to be honest. A lot of people thought when this game was new that he was going to be a largely projectile-oriented character because he has, you know, the spit he has the drones he has rocket punch and uh, obviously he has one of the best supers in the game with the hyper sentinel force so he can definitely play keep away but at the same time because of the speed of his flight mode uh, he is a really amazing rushdown character as well and he can mix you up high low really effectively and a lot of his hits are going to lead into massive damage if not a hundred percent so yeah another character that really just does everything he does have one weakness which i guess is his size his size could be a bit of a liability there are infinites that only work on him so at least there's that but yeah storm uh pretty much doesn't have any weaknesses at least that i'm aware of so yeah that's going to be the number two pet peeve character archetype is characters who can run away and rush down equally effectively they're they're better at doing both than most characters and then there's one more i wanted to look at from this thread and then i'm going to go into what are some of my personal uh most hated character archetypes but someone shouted out 2d characters in non 2d games i know that this is kind of overdone this has been complained about to death for like years at this point but yeah akuma and geese in tekken 7 are not my favorite characters in fact i find them quite annoying the fact that they don't really play by the rules of tekken if you will uh i know that maybe this is a bit of a uh tired take but i i really do feel this way that like the reason why i want to play tekken the thing that you know makes me hop in and play some tekken is i want a different experience i want that 3d experience with the sidestepping and all that and the, the the footsies the spacing the kbds uh and these guys just really uh ignore a lot of that you know they're jumping around they're doing like full-on like street fighter combos with special canceling and everything they're doing fadcs like what is this I, d I do think that it's really cool that uh these characters the guest characters in tekken 7 are so faithfully rendered you know they really do feel like you're playing the character in the game that they're from uh but for the people who aren't playing those characters i think it's kind of annoying you know i don't know how do you guys feel? This is definitely a little bit biased by the fact that Akuma and Geese have both been top tier at various stages of Tekken 7. They've been winning a lot of tournaments and stuff, so uh, that's definitely part of it. But for me, I, I think I would be fine with not having any 2D characters in Tekken 8. I know I might get some hate for this take just because this is, again, something that is like a real like scrub thing. The scrubs always are complaining about the guest characters, but personally, uh, I like to complain about them too. So that's just how I feel. The 2D characters, if I'm playing Tekken, I don't want to be playing against a 2D character, but that's just me. All right, so there's a couple archetypes that are my own personal pet peeves that I wanted to shout out. The first is gonna be characters that are immune to zoning yes i know a lot of people hate zoning they hate characters that are just gonna chill and throw projectiles and keep you full screen i understand people don't like that but personally i don't like characters that just completely negate that whole play style so seth again is actually a pretty good example of this seth has a teleport 
that is really, really powerful. So no matter where you are on screen, you can be completely full screen. He can just get in with the teleport if he does it when you throw a fireball or something like that. And probably even more powerful is his wall jump. He has like really the best wall jump in the game. So like no matter what's going on, like if you're throwing fireballs, he can just from full screen wall jump and get in on you and uh you know ignore your whole strategy which is pretty frustrating if you're a hard working <laughs> zoner player like me i mean why are they punishing us like this another example is probably like chip from guilty gear you know chip he's got the triple jump he's got the incredibly fast move speed so yeah chip is really really difficult if not impossible to zone you know he kind of fits in that first category as well characters who have everything except their health is low uh, Chip is a bit like that as well. You know, us humble Axel players, we're just out here trying to zone. But Chip is in here, you know, he's chilling up in this area where he's going to be really hard to uh, anti-air or maybe even impossible to anti-air because he's going to avoid all your attacks. And yeah, he's just going to have so many ways of getting past everything you're trying to throw at him. Uh, it's pretty frustrating for me. You know, speaking of characters that are difficult to anti-air, that's probably my uh, my last hated archetype here is is characters that you can't anti-air just in general. I think Yun and Yang in Third Strike are a good example, you know, because they have three strengths of dive kick that have vastly different angles. They are so impossible to anti-air. They also have stuff like air target combos, which are gonna make them really hard to parry in the air. And there's always the threat of like whiffed, whiffed dive kick into command throw is just ridiculous. So yeah, you know, if I see someone jump, <laughs> My lizard brain wants me to be able to hit him out of the sky, but uh, yeah, with a lot of these characters, it's not going to be so easy. Rufus is another example in Street Fighter 4. You know, he jumps, so you're like, all right, fine, it's time for me to anti-air, but uh, no, the dive kick is coming to check you, and he can just spam these things, like, so low to the ground. It's so annoying. I hate this guy. Sea Viper is another example from Street Fighter 4. You know, not only is she one of the only two characters in the game, to have a super jump. So you have to worry about two angles of jumps, which is a little bit weird for Street Fighter 4. But she also has a lot of control over her jump arc. Like depending on what version of flame kick she does, she can choose to hit front or back. And she is really going to destroy all your anti-air attempts by altering her trajectory with flame kicks. So, you know, I'm, I'm a Sea Viper fan. I think she's a cool character. But, uh, yeah, back in the day when uh, this game was heavily played, she was definitely one of the more annoying characters for me to fight. Personally, just because every time her feet leave the ground, it's like you're being put into a mix-up, which is pretty unusual for Street Fighter, which is usually more of a ground-based series. But, again... These are just my highly subjective personal opinions on the types of characters that frustrate me. I would love to hear down in the comments, what are yours? What types of characters do you dread seeing in fighting games and you hope they'll never return in upcoming fighting games? So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video concept. Once again, make sure to check out jmcroftsmerch.com. The link is going to be in the description as well as it should be showing up below the video. You can see uh, some of the stuff I got for sale, including the hype first round is just data mug so make sure you guys check it out and uh, that's gonna be it for the video thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye everybody